Is she dead? What we have to do is wait for a body to turn up. They usually do. Not always. A word of caution. I've seen enough in my time to know what the murder of children can do to harden policemen. Remember, Keith, though we may be dealing with godless people, don't let it drive God from your heart. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think I need to remind you that we are now treading on delicate ground where the utmost tact and discretion is required. The basic facts are as you'll find them in the press release. It's a common law marriage. The lady prefers to be known as Mrs. Charnley. But the missing child, however, still goes under the name of her natural father. She's Tracy Wilson. She's 12 years of age. Now, I know there are areas you would like to probe, but I'm asking you, please, do not add to the distress of these people. And please, do not invite them to speculate on whether she's still alive or dead. It's only seven days that we are assuming that she is still alive. What about Brightpool Park? What about it? Well, isn't it true that they think she ran away because of the conditions? The parents believe that that is a possibility, yes. Uh, you're saying you don't, Inspector? I'm saying I'm keeping an open mind. Uh, you say you're assuming she's alive. Does that mean you think she could be dead? I don't think that's a helpful question, Mr. Curran. It's a fair question. Is there something you're not telling us? There are lots of things I wouldn't tell you, Mr. Pilbro. But then there are lots of things I wouldn't even tell my wife. <laughs> Robin. Well, um... Can I just add that, could you all please be particularly careful with Mrs. Charnley? And I hope you understand me. Would you please? know you're out there somewhere. Come back home, love, or get in touch. Me and your, me and your mum know that things were bad. Things have been bad all round. We've, we've hit rock bottom. But we want you back. Mr. Charnley, do you think your stepdaughter might have been abducted? I know there are some people that are capable of it. I've asked the police to round up all the known ones and have them looked at. I, I don't know where she is. All I know is that animals shouldn't have to live the way that we live. Nobody can blame Tracy. Nobody who's, who's come and seen how, how we're fixed could blame anybody for anything. Do you want to say anything? Just, if somebody's got Tracy, please don't harm her. Nobody could blame anybody for anything. I mean, what else could that mean? She's got a potential motive. Two separate accounts from neighbours of the child being unwilling to go home at night. So would I be. And hence to a local shopkeeper of abuse, sexual abuse. 
I very much doubt if the wife knows what's what. She's practically ESN, Robin. And listen, how many times have you seen it? It's an epidemic. Oh, Charlie stinks. He's lying. Lying isn't murder. Sexual abuse isn't murder. What is this motive? Say she was threatening to blow the whistle on him. Well, there's no actual evidence of it. I spoke to Mrs. Houghton yesterday. Mrs. Houghton couldn't find her own backside with both hands. Social services have let kids down time and again on this issue. Well, I've drawn the canals. I've looked down all the manholes and opened up all the lock-up garages. I've looked in every disused flat and house on that estate. I've hauled in every child nurse in a 50-mile radius. I've covered every inch of that estate. And Charlie's got no transport, Keith. She'll turn up. I don't know where he's put her, but she'll turn up. I can't do more than keep asking, Joanna. Yeah, Thank but you can... Big business, Tim Hudson, Megastar. Thanks, Lorraine. I have my dark glasses ready. I know it doesn't help, but you're not the only one. Frank's got unpaid fees going back 12 months. But Frank's a big earner. I can't afford not to get paid. Who can afford not to get paid? I don't think you understand. Will you ring them now? No, actually, I won't. Because actually, I've got a lot on my plate. Because there's nothing in it Roll for you. Roll to them again I yesterday. I haven't worked for four yes, months. Yes, I know that. Will you get that, Hugh? Hello, Fred Court. Here we are. You don't really believe me. I don't have to believe you. I have to construct an account based strictly on this, which a jury will believe in the face of some rather persuasive police evidence. Oh, come on. Juries are getting pretty wise to the way the filth make their arrests. You think so? Okay. Okay. This is my story. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I was sitting at home one night in Hampstead, minding my own business, when I was arrested by a group of detectives from the drug squad for dealing in a quantity of cocaine which they'd brought with them specially for the occasion. Now, I see you asking yourselves, why? Why would they do this to me? Well, what other reason could it be other than the time-honored obsession which repeatedly drives detectives to nick actors with uncles and the Tory government. I should think you get five years. Well, I have to say, your reputation and your fees did lead me to expect you might come up with something rather more irresistible than that. <laughs> really? You're not obliged to me, you know. There are many, many barristers in the temple who would be only too delighted to charge you even higher fees to run this rather engaging story past 12 intelligent people. I think Nigel and I should have another talk before we go any further. Nothing really annoys me. I'm not annoyed. Yes. I think you should. You're complaining about being a hired hand. If you want a wage rise, why don't you come out and say so? I'm not asking for a wage rise, and I didn't start with the complaints. And don't blame me if the phones get cut off. Nobody's talking about phone bills, and this is not a personal attack on anybody. I have to go to court. This whole area has to be aired by the entire set, Lorraine. Well, air it then. But I'm not prepared to be the whipping board for everything that goes wrong. I can't help it if the solicitors won't pay fees promptly. And I am not the person to complain to if you don't happen to like the tea bags. Nobody's talking about tea bags, darling. Don't darling me, you great sexist slob. Oh, oh that's really great. A post-feminist critique. Frank, we have to get this sorted out. I know that, Michael. Lorraine. The trouble is, Frank, you're all running around like headless chickens because you've never sorted yourselves out about who you are and what you are. Bollocks. I'm going to the clerk's office now to try and help some of you lot get your cases into court. Because I'm not a lawyer, I'm not paid to stand round arguing. Frankly, that's a luxury I can't afford on these wages. God, she won't be happy until she's on a percentage and pulling in 50 grand a year like all the other clerks. 
and that's not on in this chambers. I've got a con arriving. Mm. Seems to me what Lorraine is saying is what really is the difference between Fetter Court and, you know, Pump Court or Grimshaws or anywhere else? I can't say it's immediately visible to the untrained eye, apart from in Fetter Court, we all sit round in one big drafty room. But to have a 22 year old pupil telling me that I. I might as well not have bothered setting up Fetter Court. <laughs> what did they expect? Did they think it wasn't a, a struggle for me? I'm so ugly. <sighs> Thanks, Annie. That was delicious. You me the phone. I'm sorry I didn't tell you I was going out again, did I? It's all right. You okay? Headache. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've droned on, haven't I? You sit down, have some more wine. I've got a headache. Bed, Alethea. Come on, Catherine. You need a change. Give yourself ulcers, Fred. Bingham wants me to take silk. I want you to be a careerist like he is. Advise me. You've always said you won't allow them to absorb you or buy you off. Unless you've changed your mind, you're not going to apply for silk. I was thinking about us today. We may not be the greatest marriage in the world, but we've survived 19 years. I feel rather proud of us. You're never going to let me live that down, are you? I have one brief affair which God knows wasn't worth the effort. I was talking about us, not you. Um, actually, I have to go. I'll try not to be too late. What does it matter? I've got a book to read. You've got a key. Jesus, what a shitty. I'm going back to the hotel. Unless I dig up a body quick, I can't see my editor let me fart around up here much longer. Yeah, have you heard anything about this woman in Gateshead? It's apparently got three tits. Nah, it's a conclave, there's nothing in it. Yeah, same as here. Oh, sod it. We consider it a matter of extreme urgency that we find David Charnley. We've requested the assistance of every police force in the country. Is he going to be arrested? We would like to put a few questions to him. Will you be asking him to explain the four-day delay? What about Tracy? I must urge you not to let your imaginations run riot. We now have two missing persons we're desperate to find.
Have you got any idea the ball? Give us a statement you can uh, offer us a moment. Pull it close. Pull it close. When you found I can't comment for obvious reasons on this particular set of circumstances. But one thing must be getting abundantly clear. And that is that we in our society face an epidemic of sickening violence directed at the weak, the defenseless, the very young and the very old. And that this is part and parcel of the relentless moral decline facing our nation. Attitude to criminal behavior. Police have now confirmed that the body found earlier today in Gorton Forest is that of schoolgirl Tracy Wilson, who has been missing from home for 11 days. Chief Constable John Wilkinson visited the scene this afternoon. For obvious reasons. When did she die? Well, why do you ask? How long was she kept alive? <laughs> well, you tell me. How can I tell you? I can understand that one thing can lead to another. I've got two daughters. I've always enjoyed a cuddle with them. There's nothing more natural. And I can understand how it can get out of hand. You wouldn't be the first or the last. Yeah. Now, maybe you can tell me when she died if I remind you how she died. Why should I kill her? She was threatening to expose you. Oh. Because of the damage you did her in that last sexual attack. Damage? Where did it happen? Not at home. Somewhere on Brightpool Park. Or elsewhere. You lost control. Must have been a lot of blood. You were drunk, maybe. You couldn't stop the blood. And the child was hysterical. You couldn't take her to hospital, could you? <laughs> but you had to stop her crying somehow. What kind of damage? If she'd have survived, she'd have needed a colostomy bag. Mm. 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 Oh, you couldn't stop the blood. But you could stop her crying, didn't you? With sellotape, round, round, and round her face. Is that when it started to get out of control? Hmm? Was it really Tracy, was it? It was just a rag doll. Was that the way it was? Was it real pain? Was well, she was going to bleed to death anyhow? So why not find out what it feels like when you really let go of everything that's inside you? Do you want to see what you did? You're making a mistake. You made a mistake. Why did you wait four days before you reported her missing, eh? Did you think you could wipe this little chicken off the face of the earth and nobody would notice? I thought she'd run away. She'd done so before. Yes, to get away from your filthy appeals. Why this? Why this? Why this? Why this? <gasps> oh! Are you sure this is what you want, Annette? Yeah, she's sure. Okay, come on, let's go. Right.
Somebody's having a go at somebody or not, and I don't like it. We might be able to make some progress. One at a time, please. Look, let's say that we've got our cooperative, right? Do we then pool our fees and each draw a salary? Perth sharing. Based on years of service. Graded. Solicitors all do it. It's a perfectly easy thing to organize. Oh. But nobody's saying it's a perfect solution. There's a price to pay for progress. Who's being asked to pay it? That's what I want to know. We are at the moment. For what it's worth, I think the entire chambers lacks credibility. I think we'd all benefit if Frank took silk. It isn't being absorbed or bought off. It's accepting that the left should have its share of senior counsel. James, I understand what you're saying. But it's just that I've heard this kind of talk for the last 15 years. Taking silk is joining the establishment full stop. No, I'm not in principle against any of us taking silk. But with me, it's a personal decision that I made a long time ago, which I see no reason to change. Well, I think you should. I mean, if I thought I'd get it, I'd apply. Ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. You don't know the difference it would mean to me and what I could do with my practice. No, Frank's ridiculous. You're going on as if this was 1968. Frank, it isn't radical politics anymore. It's more important than that. The politics of gesture are buried. The class war is being waged increasingly in the courts. That's what we've been talking about all night, I thought. The basic rights of a whole class are being stripped off us, and there's no time for pussyfooting about. If Frank Cartwright, QC, can speak louder in the fight than Frank Cartwright can, then get your form and fill it in. Well, that's what I think. You're ready for me. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry about this, Lorraine. That's all right. I asked to be allowed to talk to you. Um, well, I'll come straight to the point. I joined Fetter Court for the same reasons as everybody else, because I believed in it. And I was led to believe that I would be treated as someone who had a share in what we were trying to do. But... Basically, I find that there are two workers here, me and Hugh, and 11 bosses. And there have been times when... Well, I just have to say this. You've simply exploited us. So, I'm going to make your choice very simple for you. You must either devise a method of payment which reflects the relationship I thought you wanted, or find someone else to employ. So, well, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Why don't we break the habit of a lifetime and actually make a decision? Look, I've got nothing against Lorraine, but I hardly earn anything. I'm still paying off the overdraft from my sodding pupillage. Lorraine's earning more than I am as it is. Okay, okay, uh, a vote. Do we pay her more money? Do we up her salary? Those in favor? One, two, three, four. Those against? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it's a crying shame. Yes? Have you read it? Vile, isn't it? Thanks for thinking of me. Look, I don't think I... Perhaps...
Perhaps I'd better come up and talk to you about it, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Do you think briefing a woman will help, Charlie? I think it'll help me. What about the wife? Do you have access to her? If I must. But Curran's not keen on the process of justice screwing up as exclusive. Huh. The two kids are in care. She'll have a hard job getting them back. And does she know that? God, Catherine, it's hard to figure out what she knows. She's a mess, really. Anyway, that's my problem. What makes you so sure he didn't kill the girl? How did he get the girl to the place where she finally died? He has no transport. They say he must have taken her there by public transport and carried out the final attack in anger because she was threatening to expose him. But, I mean, not a hint of a witness to the journey. And I don't think he's the sort of man who would actually be capable. Um, look, do yourself a favor. Don't spend too much time looking at the post-mortem photographs, OK? How is he mentally? Falling apart at the seams. He's in Risley. He's been attacked twice. One lot beat his head in. Another lot tried to sit him on a hot plate. And he's tried to kill himself? Yeah. I think he'll try again. And despite that, and despite the fact that he's confessed, you still think he's innocent? Yes, of what he's charged with. He's not a monster. It's not as simple as that. Why did he confess? I don't know. Has he ever tried to claim the cops beat it out of him? No. Nope. And is the other stuff true? Was he raping her? I don't know. This is Catherine Hughes. She's going to represent you. Hello. We've been told you've taken no food today, David. been any more attacks on you. And what about the screws? Are they okay with you? David, whatever else you may have done to Tracy, and we're going to have to talk about all of it, I don't think you killed her despite what you've confessed to. Hang on to that, then. You're not guilty of what you're charged with. That's all that really matters. What they say was your motive, that you'd been sexually abusing her. What about that? I have to ask.
before. Actually, he's fantastic. He's a true star. I can meet Lorraine as well. Actually, he isn't fat. Lorraine's left. You're so horrible to I expect. Alicia's coming with me to overall Tim Huston. Is that all right? I need you to look after the boys. No! Why should I? Alicia, listen, will you behave? I'll make it up to you if I get you a signed photo. I'm sick of her. Well, for God's sake, go. Will you just let me handle this? Yeah, you. Uh, I'm on my way, but. Well, we said 5.30. No, you told me 5... Shit. Oh, come on. Tell them to turn the television down. Ellen, this fella's never going to get to court. I've seen this before. He wants to die. Jesus Christ, he should die. She was only a little girl. He deserves to die the shit. I'd like to kill him myself. Listen, if he won't eat, it won't be long before he goes beyond help. Get the shrinks back into him. Give him something drastic. Let's get out of here. I want to go home. Here you go. That's it. Um, Alicia? This is Moira. Moira, Alicia, uh, where... Sorry. Where are they? Upstairs. Have they had any coffee? I didn't tell you the truth before, Frank, because it would have landed a friend in trouble. And now? Well, he's left the country. He's an American, a guy I met out on the West Coast when I was over there doing an American telly. We became friends, we hung out, we smoked dope together, you know. I didn't see him again until he turned up in my dressing room. I didn't even know he was in the house until he came round after the show. Yeah. Tessa Park, she's not in today. One of those days, Ken. Mm. Okay. You'll find back tomorrow. One of those days, okay. Michael. Michael, tell me, have you ever finished a case in Snaresbrook at 12.30 and started another one in Aylesbury at 2? Perhaps our clerks know something I don't about British Rail. Or perhaps they think we've all got bloody helicopters. Anyone for a drink? I see. And what is it? Yes, yeah, she's here. I yes, I'm, I'm illegal. The case? Are you telling me that the entire oh, cast was using illegal substances? Dad! 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 I'm sorry about this. Well, 
Is it a wrap? If you've got any questions, I'll be outside. Oh, yes. Thank you. Word with you, please. With this kind of massive brain hemorrhage, there's really not much doubt. Only the ventilator's keeping it going. I'm terribly sorry. Perhaps you should try and get some sleep. Come back later. Thank you, yes. Um, would it have made any difference if I'd been there when she collapsed? None whatever. I see. Thank you. I'm terribly sorry. Got a key. Yeah. Thank you, James. Are you in court today? Don't worry. I'll sort everything out. Just get some sleep.
a sense, what I have to say to you today, as we sit in these splendid surroundings, is about survival, spiritual survival, in a world which is disintegrating before our astonished eyes. But I would like to take as my theme what St. Paul called the furniture of the mind, those large, familiar, everyday articles of faith on which so much depends if we're grown less fashionable, less comfortable, less convenient in these times. Such a thing as personal responsibility. <laughs> now, we've heard a lot, and mark my words, we're about to hear a lot more about a certain case, which I needn't name to you, about poverty and deprivation being the causes of this epidemic of violence. And no doubt it is, in some minor way, in some cases, a contributory factor. But the time draws near when even the blind who lead the blind must begin to see that crime is not a disease, but a sin. <laughs> if it is a disease, it's a moral sickness. A tide of cheap, trashy, pseudo-scientific, pseudo-philosophical, off-the-shelf morality, which is all but engulfing St. Paul's sturdy furniture. The me generation, with its throwaway marriages and its disposable children, is now giving way to its offspring, the not-me generation. Criminal behavior, not me. Subversive civil disorder, not me. Theft, violence and mayhem on a scale unparalleled in modern times. Oh no, it's not me. It's the government to blame for not giving me a job. It's the housing officer to blame for not giving me a house. But you can't blame me. It's not me. wherever labour we wanted. Oh, it on the roads, eh? the M62, 63, and the M56. And no more roads, and I, I moved on. Picking spuds, smashing up batteries for the lead in them. And then I got work in a slaughterhouse, carrying carcasses for three years, that way. And I was finished, knackered. 49 years old and finished. What's this got to do with Tracy? You've got to sell what people want to buy. It's a law of life, miss. A law of life. We have to survive. This and this should go with that. But it doesn't add up. Why don't these bloody numbers add up? I'm supposed to, is it? Well, of course it's supposed to. If this doesn't add up to the same as this, then this bit in the middle is missing. Yeah. And when that used to happen, Frank used to write a check to cover the bills. What? Oh, God, I've had enough of this. 
I'm going home. Tomorrow, we get these properly audited and work out an accounting system. When's Frank coming back, James? I don't know. He's exhausted. What am I going to do with this Hudson brief? I mean, Frank does not answer my calls. Give me the bloody thing. I know we can never be close friends, personally, politically, in the way, for instance, you and Catherine are. You and uh, Gloria have my undying gratitude and friendship. The things you've done for the kids. Yes, I know, I know, I, I know all that. I realize I'm about to be presumptuous, but I simply wanted to talk to you as a colleague and admirer. When you come back to Fetter Court, and I hope it'll be soon, don't allow yourself to be sidetracked by esoteric disputes about what is democracy. You should go for the big issues. Fix your mind on the important questions of the time. And take silk. Thank you, James. You know Hudson, don't you? Yes, vaguely. Could you possibly manage it? Yes, of course, Frank. Oh, I won't forget this, James. Where is she? Upstairs, wasting our time. All she's capable of is sitting all day in front of the telly like Nelly the Elephant. What is it, anyway? He hasn't topped himself, has he? Ruin your investment, would it? What's it to be? Life with the Butcher of Brightpool Park. Where's La Passionara, then? Who? There in the car. Barristers aren't allowed to talk to potential witnesses. Witness? Listen, I've got a right to be in on this if it affects the case. Do you want me to get a court order? If there was any chance of a copy of the post-mortem photos, you'd be astonished at how grateful I would be. Like what? I don't know. Um, what are you in it for? What is it you really want, Catherine? Tell me what you'd like. Well, Clive... No, go on, go on. What would you really like? I'd like to hang your balls around your neck. Are you a dyke?
That woman needs help. I've got certificates saying there's nothing wrong with her mentally. She needs a roof over her head and food in her mouth. She needs 30 grand, darling. Now, are you going to give that to her or am I? Provided her husband is found guilty of murdering her daughter. Otherwise, she gets nothing, right? You mean she should get paid either way, like you two? Maybe you could arrange for her to see the kids. I've offered, but I won't allow a photographer. If she knew what was going on, she's not admitting it. Even to herself. I don't know. I don't think we should put her in the box. No, okay. Charlie's got to do it all alone. James. Hello, Tim. Look, why don't you go and have a quick cup of tea? I'm just going upstairs to have a word with the prosecuting counsel, and I'll see you again before we go in. Right. I'm sure justice will be done. Well, if so, we can always appeal. Right. Just a joke, Tim. James. I'm glad I bumped into you. What can I do for you? We're against each other this morning. Yes, Mr. Tim Hudson, he's a naughty man. Not at all. It's all a ghastly mistake. <laughs> You're stunned. Let me tell you the facts. I was given the coke by a dressing room visitor, an American film star. Good heavens. It was a gift for the cast of the play to share at a party. No question of me dealing in the stuff at all. In fact, I have a theatrical night to tell the jury all about this side of backstage life. And will the jury wear a theatrical costume? I don't need to make money this way. I'm a very successful actor. I'm a good character. So good, in fact, that I got a member of the Privy Council as a character witness. Well, I know at least four members of the Privy Council that should be in prison themselves. What are you suggesting, James? I'll plead possession with very heavy mitigation. Public gallery looking at a who's who of the theatre and politics. The full month, eh? Frankly, I don't think the jury's going to believe I'm a dealer. I think you should think again about that charge. The police, God bless them, have made an honest mistake. Afraid not, James. Let's stand it up in front of a jury, shall we? He, um. He put it on the table, yes. No. Actually, a tobacco tin. Yes, we understand that. What I'm trying to... Get me to say, right, okay. No, no, not get you to say. I'm not trying to get you to say anything. I'm trying to get you to convey to the court what exactly became of the tobacco tin. The tobacco tin had nothing to do with me. Your counsel is doing his best to assist you, Mr. Hudson. If you could listen to his questions a little more carefully. I'm frightfully sorry. That's all right. I'm grateful to your lordship. It's my fault I'm not making myself clear. Was the cocaine in the tobacco tin when you first saw it produced? I'm sorry. I've completely gone. No, sorry, it's gone. <laughs> Two teas. Thanks. The bloody ironic thing is, I really was telling the truth. Well, let's wait and see. Juries are strange creatures. There you go. If you've kept me out of prison, James, I'll do anything for you. Well, actually, there might be something. Go. 
Come on. Cadbury James. Alethea Cartwright. Yes. These are for you. I hope you don't mind. James said I could join you for lunch. Is that all right? Yes, that'll be all right. I'll put them in here for you. Cheer up, Frank. Cheer up. You're taking my daughter out to lunch with a drug abuser. He got off, didn't he? The jury must have been fully paid up members of his fan club, is all I can say. No, they just thought anybody who could go to the trouble of inventing a story as bad as that would have learned his lines better. All right, well, you sit in the middle, all right? Okay. Thanks. How's your man? Funny. Half <laughs> crackers. And you? Anything. Mm, you can never tell the jury is, can you? What about you? How are you? Grief is like chronic pain. It's very isolating. I mean, I think I'm hallucinating half the time. But the thing that's really knocked me sideways is the guilt. About what? About everything. Everything. About being alive, my marriage, my job. It's quite a revelation, I can tell you. You go through life thinking that you're rational and you're not. You think that you're emotionally placid and you're not. In fact, uh, I don't know what I am anymore. Sorry. It's very embarrassing, isn't it? The other thing about grief is that it keeps delivering you into situations where you find your friend standing there looking sympathetic because you're talking incomprehensible crap. Oh. Better go. I don't really want lunch. But I do want to say something. Catherine, the grief that has me by the throat now, still, is rooted not in a love that was cut down, but in the guilt that I've nursed for ten years about sacrificing my marriage and my family to my job, to my career. So I'm saying to you, don't do it. Don't let them crucify you over Brightpool Park or anything else. It's not worth it. Sounds like you're ready for work again. Soon. I'm ready to take silk, too. What would you say? I'd say go for it. That's what I think. Then go for it. Say it. Say it. 
it. Not guilty. I want you to say it as if you meant it. Say, sorry to spoil the party, cut this. Not guilty. David Charnley, you are charged with murder. The particulars of that offense are that on the 26th day of April, 1987, you murdered Tracy Wilson. How say you to that charge? Not guilty. I left the path and went up there because I saw something waving at me. There was something on the ground or halfway out of the ground. And I was on the point of calling out, saying, could I help? It seemed to be only a doll, or the head of a doll. And then I saw it was a girl, partly buried. The eyes. The eyes were gone. Yes, would you, uh, would you, um, would you like a glass of water? Please. I'm gonna cross-examine him. Why? I want the jury to see me being nice to somebody. Miss Hughes? Mr. Savile, we've all been very distressed by your description. It's easy for those of us who are here in a professional capacity to forget what being a witness really means. I would just like to clarify one small point. Is this an accessible part of the forest? Uh, no, the path is well concealed. It's used mainly by the foresters. It can't be seen from any public road or footpath, can it? Oh, no. Thank you. Yep. The forensic evidence showed matching traces of fibers from his pullover underneath the girl's fingernails. Yes, forensic tests made after his arrest link him with the girl, but not the crime. And that's hardly surprising, is it? That he should be linked with his stepdaughter since they lived in the same house. So it can't have been that that persuaded you that a nationwide manhunt wasn't necessary. It was clear from the preliminary examination that the girl had suffered sexual abuse over a long period. Several years, not days. So you suspected him of having sexually abused his stepdaughter once you received the preliminary report? Yes. But not before then. You didn't suspect him before? Yes, I did. You did? Oh, that's interesting. Why was that? Because I asked myself that if you believe your daughter has run away, why wait four days before you tell anybody about it? Frank. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, I've been running. Deserved. I want to plead guilty. I am guilty. I, I don't want to show my face. Oh, Jesus Christ! Mother of God! Say it all. <laughs> 
Can I help you? <laughs> Shall I say it for you? <laughs> you told G the truth about how you felt about Tracy, didn't you? You can say it. Go on. You couldn't resist her, could you? This little girl. But you didn't kill her. No. No, of course not. She was your little girl, wasn't she? You can say it. You can say it out loud, all you did to her. David, you're not guilty. <laughs> David, when we get up there today, I want you to forget about everybody in court but me. Just talk to me, okay? <laughs> Mr. Charnley, are you prepared to be totally frank with the court? Yeah. When did you start having sex with Tracy? After the children were born. How old was Tracy? Eight. What did you get her to do with you? At first, it was just talk shit. And then I... got her to masturbate me and then we went all the way would you tell the court exactly what that means intercourse you had full sexual intercourse with her yes sexual acts continue? Until she went missing. Four years. Mr. Charnley, was Tracy... Mr. Charnley, I'm afraid you have to tell the court. No, she wasn't. It's clear to you that Tracy was becoming so desperately unhappy that she might expose you to the authorities in order to escape your sexual advances. Was that part of your statement accurate? No. And what was inaccurate about it? Was she? Yes, she was. Was she threatening to expose you? No, she knew that we needed her. About your sexual needs, are you? No. In what way did you need her? She knew we needed the money. What money?
Mr. Chanley. You must now tell the court the whole truth. We, we needed the money that she was starting to earn. How did she earn this money? First, there were photos and, and pornographic videos. I've just come from a meeting with Hugh at which I made it plain that he cannot continue as our senior clerk. I also made it plain that uh, it was our fault and not his to have asked him in the first place. I then asked him if he'd consider coming back as junior clerk. Well, I think that's appalling. Just, just a second, Joanna, please. I've also had a meeting with Lorraine today, at which I asked her, on behalf of Fetter Court, to come back. She has accepted. And I've offered her the customary terms to clerks in the temple. A percentage? Correct. I have also made an application for silk. My apologies for my prolonged absence. I will return in the new year to lead this chambers into what I believe will be a crucial period. Well, I'd like a democratic vote about Fetter Court becoming a cooperative. By all means. <clears throat> uh, would those in favor please show? One, two, three, four, five. Those against? It's one, two, three, four, five. Um, Catherine can't be here tonight, but she wished to record her vote against this motion. I would hope that you would all accept that. Yes, I do. Members of the jury, this is the part of the trial where I'm allowed to speak directly to you. You've heard forensic evidence that Tracy was killed in the remote woodland spot where her body was found. You've heard David Charnley possesses no means of transport. You've heard Inspector G agree that no forensic... Why then, you may begin to ask, was my client ever charged with this crime? It was because he confessed. Why did he confess? Imagine, your stepdaughter has been missing for 11 days and you have reason to fear the worst for her. You and your family have become the focus for national concern and speculation. And you have two appalling secrets to live with, both of which cause you profound feelings of guilt. So much so that you can't stand it anymore, you run away. Your stepdaughter's body is found in a shallow grave. You are apprehended and then interrogated by the force's most experienced detective. You are shown a photograph of her remains. What might this do to a mind struggling for 11 days to block out its own imaginings of the indignities and torment she may have suffered in her last days and hours? At the hands, perhaps, of one of the men who for the last four years have picked her up on street corners in order that she might serve them sexually. Ladies and gentlemen, We don't know exactly 
how Tracy died. But we do know exactly how and where she lived. She lived in a corner of late 20th century England called Brightpool Park. She lived in the kind of grinding poverty that few of us in this room can imagine having to endure. If we pity her death, we should pity too her life and ask ourselves, who is responsible for putting her onto the streets? Why? Surely this man here, David Charnley. Yes, he's responsible. He let it happen. He put his stepdaughter onto the streets. He had no skill to sell, and nobody wanted to buy his strength, but there was a market for his daughter. By his own words, David Charnley denies killing Tracy but confesses to you that he did the unspeakable. David Charney confessed a murder precisely because he had not lost all moral sense. Precisely because he was overwhelmed with guilt, he took personal responsibility for her death. And now you know why. But, members of the jury, you are not trying him for sexual abuse. You are not trying him for pimping for a child. You are trying him for the most serious crime in the calendar, murder. The burden of proof is on the prosecution to prove the case so that you are sure. But before you decide upon your verdict, let it be understood what David Charney's real crime has been. Looks very nice, doesn't it? We'll have to keep it very tidy, won't we? Mm -hmm. Can I be in charge of that? Yes, of course. All right, then. Let's go. By the right. Turn. Quick. March. will stand. Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict upon which you've all agreed? We have. Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty of the charge of murder? Not guilty. <laughs> 